What's going on guys? Today we're working on a Craftsman YS 4500. Uh, the owner of this said they uh, used it to pull out a, a stump or something in the fall time and uh, the old lady said it just died out so they didn't really know exactly what happened. All the tires were flat so we had to uh, fill them up with some air so that we could load it into our trailer. There's your model number 944-606-911. Turn on our choke, depress the brake lever. It's got an Intec Briggs and Stratton 20 horsepower V-twin on it. Won't start, so uh, we'll probably have to do a carburetor clean and definitely change the oil filter as well. We had to charge the battery because that was dead, but uh, right now I'm just going to be taking the deck off. So this is a pretty simple deck to take off. We got a hook up at the front here, so we'll pull the pin and take that bar out. Got a pin here that goes down to a, I guess, flat bar that goes to the deck. So we'll take this pin off on both sides. And then at the back here, that's what uh, sets your deck height based on where you got your uh, setting, your deck height setting. And all that is is a pin as well. And then uh, we'll slide the belt off of the uh, engine pulley there and we'll uh, pull the deck out so we can have a look underneath it and uh, see if we can see the drive belt. Put your deck to the lowest setting and then uh, that slides this, right? So that goes up and down, up and down. So if you put it to your lowest setting, you can pull the pin, pull that washer off, and then just slip that out, same as on the other side. Like I said, guys, just a couple pins, real easy stuff. Okay, so once you have your uh, left and right side deck mounts off, like the hangers, pull your deck forward just a little bit uh, so you can pull out the uh, pin on that and that rod. Then you should have enough slack on your belt to be able to pull it off of the uh, engine pulley here. And then we're just gonna slip it out from that keeper and then we can slide the deck out sideways. And before you pull your deck out, you wanna put it back up into the uh, top position and that'll bring your hangers up a bit so that you're not you know, catching them when you're pulling your deck out because you could end up hitting something and bending it, right? And you don't want that to happen. And now that we got our deck pulled out just a little bit, you can see that here's the blade and gauge cable. So on this machine, it runs off of uh, just your your handheld lever up here. But because there's so much grass and stuff on the deck, I can't really see where it hooks up. So I'm just gonna clean up this little area there. I'm guessing it's just a pin that you pull off from one side and then you could pull the cable out from the other. So we'll get that off and then get the deck out. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see it or not, but uh, we pulled the pin out of there and uh, we gotta get this spring now because the cable attaches to that spring which attaches to the lever that the idler pulleys on and you guys can see just the sheer amount of grass that's packed into this thing. I mean, it is, guys, like, like that's, it goes all the way down four or five inches. It's insane, This it's never been cleaned. I'm surprised this thing hasn't caught fire with the sheer amount of dried, dead grass around the engine and just everywhere, so it's a good thing we're getting this deck off. Even in behind, you guys can see by the transaxle, it's unbelievable. This thing's never been washed, so it's a good thing we're getting this done. But I gotta get that, uh, that spring right there. I gotta unhook that from that little uh, bracket. You normally can't bend them up enough, but uh, we're gonna get it done. So there's our spring right there, and that little spring hooks onto uh, your idler bracket. So essentially, when you're running this thing, you don't want your blade to be spinning all the time. So you're running it, and the belt's slack, and when you wanna go to engage your blade, you pull that lever, it brings in your idler pulley, which tightens up your belt tension and uh, starts your blade spinning, right? And then when you release that, there's these little brake pads right there and they grab onto the uh, pulleys. You can see here, they grab onto the pulleys and that stops your, uh, your blades from spinning. But you guys can see the sheer amount of grass that is packed into here. Unbelievable, like I said, never been washed, never been cleaned. So I'm gonna put this deck onto the uh, dolly, wheel it out to the front, blast it, clean it up. It definitely needs to be painted. Uh, we'll talk to the uh, to our customer about doing that. Then we'll have to flip this up on the Mojack and uh, look underneath it to swap the drive belt because I'm guessing that's what the problem is. So after pulling the air filter and spraying some uh, carb cleaner into the engine, we were able to fire it up. Uh, it ran kind of rough. Uh, it kept running, so I know that the, the main jet's got a little bit of gunk into it, but it did run, so we know that it's got spark and all the things that you need to uh, make it go. The problem is 
when uh, when it was running, I went to try to put it into gear, and uh, this is your transaxle release, so that allows you to freewheel it. So just you know to push it around at home, uh, whatever you guys can see here, push it. It's got to be out. So to drive, it's got to be in. So that was in. And we came up here and put our uh, our drive into forward, reverse, nothing worked. So I'm guessing when they were pulling that log out of the uh, backyard, they uh, smoked a belt because there was just too much load on it. And she said, you know, I guess that's what uh, the lady there meant when she said it just stopped working. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, the engine still ran. I don't know, who knows, maybe it was so heavy that the engine died out too. Uh, I'm not too sure because she can't really remember, but that's okay. So I'll get this blasted with the hose. We can inspect all the pulleys, all the bearings, make sure everything's uh, properly lubricated. And uh, like I said, we'll see about painting this and we'll get this thing flipped up. Well guys, here's a look at the underside of it. Not as bad as I thought it would be. The deck's uh, still pretty solid. There's uh, no rust holes in it, which is good. It's just surface rust. So uh, we'll get this uh, washed up vacuumed out and scraped off and then we can paint it up and uh, undercoat the deck get the blade sharpened you guys can see here they got into some rope that's uh, never a good thing because uh, if that seizes up you know then your pulley's not spinning and then you can burn out a belt so we'll get that taken out when we take the blade off prime example of why you guys want to keep your deck the underside clean so I'm scraping off uh, you know chunks of grass and look what comes with it there's your deck. That's all pieces of your deck coming off. Just in little, you know, thin strips. But I tell you guys, you know, you let that sit, all the moisture sits, the grass sucks it all up, and then it just rots your deck. So that come from a spot like, you know, here. But uh, you guys can see it's still solid. You know, there's no holes in it, which is good. But uh, look it, I'm gonna try to get a shot. Get a shot right here. This, that's where that strip come off, right there. And uh, you guys can see that, you know, if that was left a little longer, it's starting to eat away, right? So a uh, good thing we're scraping this. It's one of the things we do here at Eliminator Performance, scrape all the uh, old grass off. So then we pull the blades, sharpen them, get them back on, and then we undercoat it with uh, like a crown um, rust preventative. And uh, that keeps your deck from, from uh, rusting out. The grass, you know, people say, oh, well, then the grass is going to stick even more. But the thing is, guys, the grass sticks already. So if you got like the sticky crown rust preventative on it uh, or like a car uh, undercoating, you know, it's all the same. Basically, you just want to have a layer of something in between your steel deck and the grass. And it doesn't matter, you know, you could paint this all you want, but that paint's just going to wear off. So we like to use uh, a rust inhibitor. Um, and then, you know, every year when you do, uh, you get your machine serviced, and the deck comes off, you know, to have the blade sharpened, you can uh, just power wash it. And, and with the crown rust preventative, uh, it, you know, it basically, like I said, it puts a film in between the deck and the grass that's stuck on like this. So what you can do is you just take the pressure washer to it and it all comes off nice, nice and easy. And uh, you don't have any uh, holes in your deck. Okay, so we're up under the machine. You guys can see engine pulley at the top. Uh, down from there on the left side is the stationary flat idler. Down from there, the third one down on the left side is the clutching idler. Down on the right side is the V idler. And then you have your belt keepers on your transaxle. So if we look at how that relates to the actual machine, we can see that right here, this belt has slipped off from the pulley right there. So we can see that right here, she was pulling that log and we could see that it slipped off right from here and it's up over it. So this may not need a belt swap. Uh, the belt looks to be in half decent condition anyways. It's not, uh, you know, it doesn't have any uh, tear marks in it. It doesn't have any loose uh, stuff that's coming out. So what we're gonna do is slip this back on top of here. We'll get all this grass. You guys can see just unbelievable amounts of grass. We'll get all that cleaned up and we'll make sure that this thing drives. Okay hey guys, we're just scraping the uh, the top of the deck now. We got the bottom all scraped off. We took the blades off, sharpened them up. Had a little hard time getting them off, but uh, we ended up turning up the PSI in our compressor and uh, they came off uh, without breaking, which is always nice. But uh, you guys can see that in the deep crevices here of the deck, we're starting to get into the rust issue because all that moisture that's sitting in there. So uh, it's a good time 
to clean your deck at the end of the year guys you want to take your deck off and uh, get that cleaned up so that it doesn't rust because in some of these areas like i was showing you before sooner or later that would have rusted through so we're going to end up scraping this entire deck uh, vacuuming it out and uh, we'll hit it with some uh, black trim clad rust preventative paint and the customer's paying for it but uh, because she didn't take the time to wash it guys now she has to uh, pay the money to uh, get us to paint it and uh, you know do basically maintenance on it so as long as you're washing your machine and you're washing all the grass off of the paint on your deck and you got a new mower you know then you don't have to worry about us doing stuff like this uh, you know you won't have to worry about uh, getting your deck scraped and cleaned and painted and all that because if you wash it then it won't rust we got to get the carb off so that I can clean it so that once the belt is back on we can fire this thing up first turn of the key every time and uh, then we can lower this thing down and test it. So you're going to want to undo these four little uh, thumb screws. Take that off and you'll have your, uh, your air filter here. Pull this out. We're going to be replacing that because it's dirty. Just to see how dirty this is you guys can see that's supposed to be a see-through uh, fuel filter and you guys can see it's just caked. You know, this is where you get mice in there making nests and they'll go in there. They'll make their nests and then they'll chew on all those wires. Uh, again, back here too. That's where uh, they uh, get in. Anyways, this is your pre-filter. Pull that out. And you guys can see all types of loose grass in here, so that's no good. There's your intake plenums. And to get those off, we're going to have to take this uh, plastic shroud off. So again, first thing you're going to want to do is take off the uh, air filter cover there. Uh, that exposes this little guy here and uh, then we'll get these four taken off so we can pull that little uh, fan uh, grill off and then you're going to want to go around to these bolts right there and there's one back here. Uh, same on the other side, you know there's going to be three or four on the other side as well. Then we can uh, go ahead and pull this entire shroud off. Same as uh, the other Craftsman uh, video that I did, I think it was a YT. Uh, 3500 this one's the YS 4500 but uh, basically the same thing guys so we're gonna be pulling all that off so that we can get a little better access to the carburetor ended up taking the hood off super simple to do and I'll show you guys how to do this uh, you know without having my camera set up uh, essentially your hood is flat and then it'll be in the open position which will be about here what you want to do is rotate it to the point where it's about 90 degrees and then just lift right up guys and uh, these hoods come right off now over here on our hood we just got it sitting on the grass so it doesn't get all scratched up uh, like I said it just sits on a little bar and uh, they hook themselves in so uh, like I said guys you know you can't have it in uh, in the full open position or the full closed it's got to be at about that halfway point at about 90 degrees and you just lift up and uh, it'll lift right out of that bar and uh, you, you just pull it off that's it and a uh, good thing to note on these craftsmen's they have a sticker on the inside of the hood that show you all of your information that you need so you guys can see air filter part numbers primary mower belts drive belts uh, 42 inch blades two of them the foam pre-filter part number basically spark plugs everything you need guys It's all gonna be on that sticker. So now we got a little better view you guys can see There's your uh, your intake bolts Because it is a v-twin right and uh, They're gonna be covered you can see there that plastic is just in front of that bolt So like I said, that's why you got to take that plastic shroud off then we can get in there, undo those uh, two bolts there, two bolts on that side, disconnect our uh, choke or throttle lever, whichever one that one is, and then uh, pull that carb off and get it cleaned up. We got all of our uh, bolts taken off, so now you should just be able to, to lift this. You might have to wiggle it a few times to get the, uh, the back up and whatnot, so I'll get this off. Just like that guys so here's a look at uh, underneath the shroud of a 20 horse v-twin you guys can see because it's a v-twin two cylinders it's got uh, two coil packs so if the mice got in here and ate that you know that's uh, 65 bucks a piece right but uh, anyways now we can get access to these bolts here so we're gonna take uh, those off four of them and pull that off but you guys can see just how dirty it really is I mean it's filthy in there guys now uh, I'm not sure if you guys can get a great shot of this I'm trying, but look at the amount of dust particles that end up turning into kind of like a, almost like a clay. But uh, yeah, and it just covers your engine, guys. See that? So that's aluminum there. 
I'll try to get out of the light. That's aluminum there. And you get all that dust covering your machine like it is like that. And uh, all in here too, you can watch my Craftsman video on it, the YT3500 there. But uh, over time, the more dust and dirt that builds up on your engine, that'll make your engine run hotter because it won't be able to uh, radiate that heat and it'll stay trapped inside and you can end up cooking an engine. Okay, so here comes the uh, tricky part because now we're getting into cables and springs and all kinds of stuff. So this is your uh, choke up here and uh, that's just a little um, hex and you take that off, basically undo that, loosen that off, pull that down, pull that out. And you're gonna wanna come down and uh, take this off. Now again, guys, we got springs and uh, linkages, so you're gonna wanna take lots of pictures if you're working on this by yourself and you've never done something like this before. So you get a picture of the linkage going up, so it goes to that right there. So if we move our throttle, you can see that's full throttle, and then our choke, our choke just moves that lever over there. So again, take lots of pictures and you'll be able to disassemble this by yourself and put it back together with no problem. Okay, so I got our top bolts off. Now you guys are gonna wanna be careful. They did have red Loctite on this one. Not sure uh, if it had on that one, I couldn't really tell, but uh, one of them definitely had red Loctite. But uh, anyways, this is a good time to uh, show you that when you're taking these off, uh, you never know where the setting is. So what I like to do is take a little permanent marker and mark it and then undo that so that, uh, you know, when you go to put it back on, you don't have it like that, which would mean this would be too far out. Or if you had it any back any further, it would be in the wrong position. So again, take a little permanent marker, mark it. That's exactly where it lines up in, you know, relation to uh, this little holder and you know that it's in the same position when you put it back together. Okay, so now that we got all of our four bolts out and we got our uh, choke cable disconnected, we should. Now again, we're still gonna have to worry about this little linkage here, but we can do that once it's off. You guys can see they had all types of like glue, all sorts of nasty stuff on it. We should be able to get this off and just pull it right out once I get that linkage and that, this linkage over here taken off. Okay, so I got uh, that linkage over here and that spring disconnected from, uh, well, that's our governor down there, guys. You can see that goes right into the engine. Now we just have to unplug the fuel solenoid there. All you gotta do is uh, reach in and unplug that and uh, we can take this whole carburetor assembly off. Okay, so now that we got the uh, fuel solenoid disconnected, now we have to disconnect our fuel line. You shouldn't have to worry about fuel pissing out if you got a full tank. You can see this uh, model has a fuel pump because on this model, the fuel tank is actually below the engine and the carburetor. So it needs that fuel pump to uh, fight gravity and get the fuel from the tank up into the carburetor. So uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but those are nuts. And uh, basically there's studs. Well, you guys can see there, there's studs that go through. They screw into the uh, the intake neck there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with the hose and blast all this off of it. Just, you know, what I can. Undo the nuts, separate this plastic piece from the carburetor, separate the intake neck from the carburetor so that I just have the carburetor. Then I'll um, probably blast it again uh, or just take it apart, uh, maybe blast what I can just to get the majority of the stuff off because I don't want all of that in our ultrasonic cleaner. But I'll take you guys through how to uh, disassemble that. Okay, so we're over here on the workbench. Like I said, I blasted this off with uh, little bit of water. We got two 7 16 nuts right there. We're gonna take that off, separate this. Now you guys don't have to worry about a clean workspace right now because again, you're just disassembling it, but you definitely don't want anything like this when you're putting it back together. Let's say you had a piece of dirt there and you were gonna put that piece of plastic back onto your carburetor. Next thing you know, a chunk of dirt falls in there and you get everything back together and your machine won't start. So again, don't worry about a dirty workspace right now. Just worry about a clean workspace. Lay down a nice clean shop towel. Make sure all of that's clean. You can put that, I guess, in the dishwasher. I don't know. Uh, just spray it with a little bit of warm water and uh, you know maybe a little bristle brush and all that will come off. You guys see on that those carburetor studs? They almost look like uh, Torx heads. That's exactly what they are. And this is where you start getting into specialty tools and tools of the trade. So we got here a Signet. 35 piece, 3 8 inch torque socket bits and spanner set. We're not interested in this. We're not interested in any of these. What we are interested in are these guys right here. These are what you would call female torque sockets. 
So they accept something like this. So if you have a stud with a Torx head on top of it, this is the female version. Now this stuff may be expensive, but for uh, guys like us that are dealing with this stuff all the time, you need these. That one, no play on it. So it looks like we're gonna be using an E5. You guys can see there, female Torx. So I'll go ahead and unthread these and uh, get this carburetor apart. All it took was a little twist with the ratchet and now I can undo these just by hand. So now that that's off, we got our little spacer here. We're gonna set that to the side and now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our choke linkage here. And uh, basically, you just want to give that a little twist. You guys are just going to want to take note that uh, this piece went down and then back like that. And when you come back to the choke lever on the carb, that piece goes in towards the carburetor. Okay, so I took our uh, Phillips screws out. What I also did was marked with a little permanent marker just so that I know the location of our plug right here because uh, this plug here you know you don't want to put the thing back on and have that going the wrong way and then find out once it's on the machine so by taking a little permanent marker it just lets me know how to line everything up so here's uh, what you would call a fuel solenoid you guys can see there's a little plunger there 9 volts or 12 volts uh, but they do run on a minimum of 9 volts goes through this little plug here and up to there, as soon as you put 12 volts to that, that plunger sinks down and allows fuel to go into your carburetor. So then when you shut your machine off, that plunger sticks back out and it plugs that hole, which again, guys, this is going to be upside down and stops the flow of fuel into your engine so that basically your engine uh, bottom end doesn't flood with gas. So if one of these are defective in the closed position, basically it won't allow you to start your machine because your machine won't be able to suck any fuel out of the bowl. If it goes defective or uh, it short circuits in the open position and you have a problem where it's stuck, you go to shut your machine off and it will still allow fuel to go into your machine and it'll flood your, uh, your bottom end there and fill your oil with gasoline. So now we're gonna pull this pin here Get that out of there. I've got a, a little spot over here set up for all my clean parts. So I can set that down there. Uh, we're gonna take this off. We got, you can see, we got a little plastic needle valve. Looks fairly clean. So I'm gonna put that, so I'm gonna put that over there with the rest of the clean parts. Now, I'm not gonna put this float into the ultrasonic cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is probably just wipe off all the little gunk that's on it and then I'll put it over with the rest of my parts over there. Now we're getting into the carburetor and you guys can see there's all sorts of little gunk, little slime. It resembles uh, like jello almost, but that's uh, old fuel. The, these machines suck up everything. If I can get a shot, that's just old broken down fuel. So we're gonna get this thing cleaned out. Now this plastic piece here, that pulls out from the carburetor assembly itself. You should be able to pop that out. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful. You're gonna have a little O-ring that goes around the, uh, the side there. That's a gasket. So it's actually got pieces that go inside, but uh, with just a little bit of twisting. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is basically twist it just to break that seal and then pull it straight up, guys. So you can see there's the inside. Little yellow discoloration from old fuel, whatnot. Here's the inside of our carburetor. There's that gasket I was telling you about. Look at all these ports, guys. So this is when you get into, you know, carburetor difficulties. If you got these little holes here that are plugged, you never know, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel out this big one as best we can. We'll try not to tear it. If we tear it, we'll get a carb kit, no big deal. But we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to save it here, okay? So we were able to save that one. Now there's gonna be a little one right here, a little O-ring. We're gonna take that out. We were able to save that one. Put it in the same spot that it is, just so you know where all stuff goes. So now we can make sure that that jet is clean, that little seat, which it is. I'll probably throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner as well, won't hurt nothing. 
Uh, I can see if we can remove this, possibly unthread it. Normally I like to take as much apart as I can. If I can take something apart, then I do, uh, just so that I can clean it thoroughly. Um, you know, as, as best I can. So that's it for this episode, guys. There's a lot of information that I want to get through, so uh, it's going to be a two-part series. So click here to subscribe, click here for part two, and as always, thanks for watching.